Hi, welcome to the first video for topic two of Year 11 Stage 1 SACE Chemistry. This uh, topic is called Combining Atoms. And uh, this first video is going to be probably a little bit shorter. I'm just going to give you a quick introduction to different types of um, structures we can have. And now I'm going to talk quickly about ionic bonds. So as always, um, my um, PowerPoints always have the embedded YouTube videos in it with link to my YouTube um, channel. So um, if you need to find me, other videos you've hopefully already found because you're on there, but it's Bill Stapleton if you search that on YouTube. Um, but you can email me. I'll put my email address up the top here as well. Uh, if you want a copy of this PowerPoint, uh, if you're a student or a teacher who's wanting to uh, use this as well, you are more than welcome to that. Uh, but for my kids, anytime you see the YouTube symbol here, just click on that and that will open up another video which will help give a bit more explanation in depth of what we're looking at. So the first two topics or uh, subtopics in this particular topic for chemistry kind of um, blend in together a little bit. So I'm not going to be treating them separately. I'm just going to work my way through them. So I'm going to combine both types of materials and bonding between atoms in here as well. So first thing you need to understand is that there are three main types of chemical bonds that exist within materials. So you can have ionic bonds. So that's this one over here. This gives an example of some ionic bonding. So that's between a metal and a non-metal atom. They exist as big three-dimensional structures. Then you get to covalent bonds, such as what we see up here. Covalent bonds are between two non-metal atoms, okay, and they exist as molecules generally. It's a couple of them exist as lattices, but most of them are molecules. And then you've got metallic bonds like we see here. So that's between two metal atoms, and they again exist um, slightly differently. So when we're talking about um, the types of bonding, I alluded to a little bit already about the different types of structures we can have. So there are four main types of chemical structures that exist within materials. You have what's called an ionic lattice. So that's where you've got ionic bonding, that bonding between a metal and a non-metal atom. That exists as a large three-dimensional structure, and I'll show you that in a little bit more detail shortly in this video. You can then have what we call molecular structures. It's uh, most materials that have covalent bonding. So when you've got non-metal to non-metal atoms joining together, they normally exist as molecules. So they're sort of indiscrete um, components, a bit like we've got here. This is an example of a molecule here. And then you can have something called a covalent lattice. So you can have covalent bonding as well, but some things like graphite and sand, um, for example, exist as big three-dimensional structures, a little bit like the ionic substances do. Um, and you can have that very rarely for some with covalent bonding. And then the last one is metallic lattice, that's materials with metallic bonding. Um, they exist again as a three-dimensional structure, but a little bit different from ionic structures. So I'm going to just go through um, ionic bonds and ionic lattices in this video, and then uh, the next one will cover, probably next two will cover molecular and covalent lattices and covalent bonding as well. So the definition for an ionic bond is a bond between a metal and a non-metal atom by the exchange of valence electrons. Okay. So the fact that it's an exchange is really, really important. Now, if you know any little bit about metals and non-metals, metals actually obviously want to donate electrons, non-metals want to gain electrons. And so when we actually have um, two atoms that come together here, all right, um, what they do is the metal will actually donate its electron over to the non-metal. So you're going to keep an eye on here. I've got sodium over here and I've got fluorine here. In the last topic, we started looking at electron configurations. So you should be able to, this should be fairly straightforward for you about these different types of electron configurations that we've got. And you'll see here the sodium has a 3s1 as its um, valence electron shell. So what it wants to do is it wants to get rid of this one electron here so that the shell below it has eight electrons. That means it's full. Over here, the fluorine is 1s2, 2s2, 2p5. And that wants to gain one electron in that p orbital so that this outer shell has eight electrons. So it makes sense for this one electron here from the sodium to go over to the fluorine. So that is indeed what actually happens. So keep your eye on this electron here, okay? What happens is that electron actually goes over to this shell over here of the fluorine. You notice that that third shell of the sodium now disappears. What we get is a bond that's formed between the sodium and the fluorine because of that exchange of the valence electron. And now both the atoms have um, the exact same electron configuration because we've got that exchange of an electron. Okay. Now that happens with any um, metal to non-metal when they're forming a bond, that valence electron or electrons will exchange completely, so move completely from the shell, the outer shell of the metal, over to the outer shell of the non-metal. Now what that means for when um, you get substances with ionic bonds is that you don't have just a sodium and a chlorine atom by themselves. They actually exist as these large three-dimensional lattices. 
Now, if you don't know what a lattice is, it's this sort of thing. This is um, what's called lattice for gardens. You've probably seen um, this around. Uh, people use it for screening in gardens or for plants to grow up of. So you've got all these crisscross of um, things. Lattices can look all kinds of different shapes. But it's a big three-dimensional structure. If you imagine that each of these points is an atom. So here's an atom, here's an atom, here's an atom, here's an atom. So we have atoms all the way through and they're all bonded up. So that is the actual structure of ionic substances, and we call that an ionic lattice. So they're three-dimensional lattices. The formula that we write, such as MgCl, uh, Cl2, NaCl, MgSO4, that is the ratio. So that's the empirical formula, the simplest whole number ratio. In actual fact, there's thousands and thousands of these atoms in there, but we just represent the ratio. Okay. Each metal atom is joined to a non-metal atom by a very strong ionic bond. So the fact that we've got lots and lots of atoms in there, all held together by this really, really strong bond, which is what happens when you exchange an electron, um, has an impact on its properties. So because there are lots and lots of strong ionic bonds, they require large amounts of energy to break. So every time you want to break a bond, you have to put energy in. So because there's lots of bonds and there's strong bonds, we need lots of energy. That means they're going to have very high melting points. Okay, so that because they've got high melting points, it means they're going to be a solid at room temperature. Now, when we saw the exchange of the valence electron from that sodium over to the fluorine, okay, we saw that there was no free electrons. All the electrons were found inside the shells of those um, atoms. All right, there was no free electrons, and they weren't um, free ions either. They were actually bonded together. So because all the metal atoms and the non-metal atoms are bonded together, all right, and because there's no free electrons, they don't conduct electricity in the solid state. However, when you actually dissolve them or melt them, what you now do is you now release those free ions. So I'm just going to try and show you a little bit what I mean by this, if I can. All right, so I'm going to have to do a bit of drawing here, sorry. Um, so just bear with me two secs. All right, so let's say, for example, we have a sodium and the chlorine, so we have that bond between them, okay? When we um, actually dissolve it in water or we melt it, what we're doing is we're breaking that bond between them. Now, what that means is that now we still have that exchange of a, of a valence electron. So the sodium is now one electron down. So it actually has a positive charge and, and the chlorine or the fluorine, doesn't matter which one we're looking at, has an extra electron so that makes it a negative charge. So when you melt, or when you dissolve an ionic substance, you form ions in solution. Now, ions are able to conduct electricity. So when you melt or dissolve an ionic substances, they conduct electricity. So I'm going to highlight some of their properties over on the side here. All right. So um, they're a solid at room temperature because of that high melting point, lots and lots of bonds. They don't conduct electricity in the solid form because um, you have no free electrons or ions in the solid form. But when you melt it or dissolve it, dissolve it is the aqueous form, what you get end up with is um, free ions. They can conduct electricity. So that's a brief introduction to different types of bonding you can have. Um, ionic bonds, which we've looked at in this video, covalent bonds and metallic bonds, and the different types of structures you can have. We have ionic lattices, again, that we've gone through in this one, covalent molecules and um, covalent lattices, which we'll look at in the next couple of videos. And then finally, metallic bonding with metallic lattices that we'll look at in the, probably one of the last videos of this topic. So hopefully um, this has been a good introduction. Um, you might want to go back through, just make sure you've got all the properties of ionic substances in your head and before you move on to the next one. Thanks, guys. This is